and the conduct of professional ethics is equally important in today's world when it comes to the whole discipline uh, when it comes to the whole discipline of journalism today it is also a day for remembering those journalists who have lost their lives in the line of duty dr divedi mentioned you know while he was introducing today's lecture he also said that you know we we might be looking at some of the issues related to you know violence on media persons and today is exactly that day what we are trying to observe and commemorate we are trying to you know pay the due respect to the profession of journalism and to journalists who might have to undergo the rigorous process of collecting information from some of the most dangerous and difficult parts of the world and in that process they may also lose their lives i'll give some examples from the indian context as well today now i'll just again here one of the key themes of this year's world press freedom day is that they were you know the the unesco basically they're trying to look at how this pandemic the covid-19 pandemic has given rise to a dangerous situation which is more dangerous i would say when it comes to the flow of information and it is nothing short of a disinfodemic the pandemic please understand the pandemic has created a situation where disinfodemic is happening now this is a very interesting term now what is disinfodemic very quickly this infodemic is the spread of false and fake news at a rapid pace creating havoc at both the national and international levels and that is something which is a big challenge in present day world yesterday if most of you were there you would remember that i was talking about advent of technology and how it changed shaped the course of day journalism in i was talking about the post real society information plays a key in the post in the post industrial society the countries control the flow of information are perhaps powerful nations of the world it is a world which is known mostly as an information society an information society so so if the information is not clearly checked and regulated then it can to a situation of in this pandemic and we have that during this covid pandemic the information has all taken this info meaning that in the spread of fake and news using mediums or whether social media or news channel anything you know what idea may be but it reaching out to us i'm sure when you are opening your app groups okay, there would be some you know which thing that you know uh, is eat that etc to sell from covid so the way he also mentioned was talking about you know the aspects that he may great fan of ayurveda what is wrong if test some it's a fair with the making false case if it happens to be true it is fine but if it is true and just by saying that uh, you know that can creates a con situation for so this is the this is the prima on which my would most uh, this this is uh, you know Uh, on my uh, lecture mostly uh, as uh, you know i see that you know the topic specifically talks about the issues in international communication and you know i think i have started with the issues related to communication as well before i go into other you know issues it is very important for us to understand the philosophy So different mass media of the world the you know the or what is there in 
information on the basis of various media of the world operate uh, uh, you know the Uh, i just uh, i'm just getting some messages that you know some students are not able to uh, get my voice i just want to know if it is uh, 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 clear now because i think there is no problem from my side so uh, yes yes okay okay fine 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 i'll continue i'll continue so as i was talking about that it is important for us to understand the various philosophy of different media systems world there are quite number of philosophies and we'll look at some of these philosophies the first philosophy which i'm going to discuss about is the authoritarian philosophy of media now what is this authoritarian philosophy which i'm talking about basically here in an authoritarian media philosophy in this setup the media or the role of media is only disseminate the information which the state deems fit it means that the government will decide which information needs to be given out to the people by the media or the press yesterday we were talking about propaganda this creates where the government resorts to propaganda of a very scale the press does not have a freedom they only act as a mouth of the government government has or the state you know specifically it's not the government it state state government is an organ of so the state yields a lot of power the functioning of the news media in an authoritarian city uh, authoritarian regime the media as i have already said uh, is that they deviate from the states in and every news item that needs to be sent has to be approved by the state so basically it is a kind of a censorship imposed upon of that particular state or of that media system in india uh, you know that happened during the emergency uh, if you know a little bit history of india you would know that the same thing had happened when emergency was imposed in india and the press was allowed to be the press which it to be every every press was said that you cannot criticize the government uh, you know thanks to thanks to you know the protests and thanks to the spirit of the people of india who fought against uh, you know for, who fought against the authoritarian uh, authoritarianism of the then government and we saw the emergence lifted but it's a grim reminder as to how the press if controlled and subjugated can lead to serious repercussions for the control and so simply put authoritarian philosophy is something where the state controls the media completely the media is not on its own it has to take approval from the state for each item which it deem fit uh, you know the second aspect of you know this authoritarian philosophy is uh, you know the the media uh, should cannot criticize the state or the now it may sound ridiculous that is how it happens in authoritarian regimes i mean uh, uh, you know if you look at some of the world countries of the world where we had authoritarian regimes whether it was you know the uh, taliban ruled afghanistan uh, when taliban were ruling afghanistan the people or the press did not have any freedom of its own it was it was only the international press who would you know go and who would report uh, report as to what is happening in that particular country look at iran today i mean you know it's it's a classic example yes uh, 
and even you know i i, I agree north korea and china definitely mahendra ji are a classic of authoritarian authoritarian states i mean very recently you know in china there was a news item that a journalist has been sentenced to jail for criticizing the government of china of for in with regards the handling of covid so you can very well see someone is criticizing the government for not doing its job properly then in authoritarian setup they can be jailed or to a large extent they can also be uh, very recently uh, they know there was this uh, uh, you know uh, uh, journalist jamal kashgogi he was murdered you know the prince of a certain arabic nation and that created a huge uproar because he was not towing the line of the government of that country he was vocal he was critical of what the government is doing in that country now uh, you know then in the another aspect you know of authoritarian media regimes or authoritarian control of media would be that uh, who owns the media you know who is basically owning the media uh, see usually you know the media is either privately owned is state owned classic example of media in india duradarshan duradarshan is controlled by the government it's a public service but if you look at uh, it kingdom then you know, bbc the british broadcasting corporation which is you know which is a government uh, run organization it media you know there are hundreds of examples i did i uh, you know uh, not uh, just one Yeah, outlets, but every every media outlet is private. Now, the control is important because if it is owned by the private entities, then you need to ensure that they do not cross the line. If it is government owned, obviously you know, own property. I mean, everything is in their control. But if it is private owned, then they need to ensure that they do not cross the line so the first system or the ways in which media can operate authoritarian processes of media to the second way which, uh, you know the media systems are supposed to operate is the libertarian philosophy now what does it do now here basically it can be privately owned second the government can also own it but when it comes to privately owned there is an agreement that the private owned media can resort profit making media organization not only dissemination information but it is also a profit making venture when you look at most of the media organizations which are privately owned uh, look at the television channels for example and when you see the 9 o'clock debate uh, you know on the on those news channels i'm not naming any news channels i mean there are so many but when you look at some of the debates on these news channels you can very well understand that the kind of debates some of these channels are doing is solely for the purpose of of trp what is the purpose trps and why do they trps because trps will help them in getting more advertisements at a higher price which will increase their profit and their revenue it does not matter whether the content is uh, you know uh, is reflecting the mood of the nation or it is talking about the common man wagera wagera that's not relevant important is let us create a high decibel or let us create a high program or television sets to attract a lot of people to watch those programs and it will create situation where trps can be gathered people you know are fighting this they are fighting on screens they are throwing each other and i have seen certain you know very interesting debates where you know the panelists are beating each other so this has become the norm and we are enjoying it it is it is surprising but we are enjoying it but at the end of the day 
people are watching it people are liking it and that is helping these channels or these organizations to get higher revenues so libertarian you know libertarian philosophy of media you know on this particular uh, particular concept it's not so bad as it looks it means that apart from making profit also media or the press has a significant of freedom and here it is not government which is the media rather it media which self regulate themselves and there is a difference between government regulation and self regulation the government is not censoring each and every content which is being sent through these media channels the the media have their own freedom the but the media as a professional organization they decide that we will regulate ourselves to maintain a certain standard and quality of the programs or of the uh, you know publications which we are producing so this is what you know the uh, the libertarian media philosophy talks about and in the libertarian media philosophy one important aspect is that competition is encouraged which means that let there be free and fair competition the job of the government is to ensure that the marketplace is free there is no biasness when it comes to competition everyone can start from the same starting line basically this is a race everyone is starting from the same starting line the ones who are better prepared they will be the first the ones who are not prepared in that competition they will lose it's as simple as that and in this case what are the factors which help some of the organizations to be more competitive the first factor would definitely be the financial aspect if you have money i mean you know i mean to set up a media organization you need money for you know and that money is important because it will help you set up a glo- you know a conglomerate if you look at odisha for example i mean you know uh, who do you think this is a question for uh you know uh, uh my, my, you know this is a question for my you know for my audience today who do you think are the major media organizations of odisha just one or two names yes this is a question for my press. yes mahendra kumar is saying you know otv yes uh, sambad yes uh, sarit deep is also saying otv absolutely uh, so these are you know some of the major you know uh, media conglomerates uh you know uh, uh, some of the major media conglomerates which control a significant portion of the media space in odisha and if i talk about it at the national level can you give me some examples dear learners uh, some uh, names of uh, yes toi absolutely toi india tv uh, abp times now wonderful wonderful yes you are right absolutely reliance uh, yes uh, uh, very interesting ndtv yes so you are all right so it means that there are some very large organizations and when you have such large organizations it becomes difficult for smaller players to compete in such kind of an environment i mean imagine if uh, uh, smriti rekha samal decides to open a media channel today uh do you think smriti rekha you would be able to compete with uh, ndtv or reliance or times now do you think would it be possible to compete and be the number one news channel of india absolutely you know it will it will not be so easy it will not be so easy uh, to you know to compete you will have to uh, you will have to you know uh, struggle and you will have to fight it out and uh, uh, if you become successful that's a different thing but now they being the major players you would have to struggle and you would have to work really really hard to become the top uh, uh, you know news channel of this country so financial aspect is plays a very key role then the second aspect which needs to be looked about is the political affiliation please understand the political affiliation what is the political affiliation of these media organizations are they completely neutral are they supporting 
backing a certain kind of a political party are they being funded by a certain political party all these factors also needs to be seen and uh, you know that will tell us that whether that organization is really neutral or is biased so in when you when you see you know some television channels in odisha you know that there are certain channels which are absolutely absolutely pro bjd and there are certain channels which are absolutely absolutely non you know uh, they are against bjd anti bjd this is how it happens you know both at the national and the international level as well so uh, uh, you know the, so that, that that creates a different you know that creates a problem of its own and uh, unfortunately the the people the people who are the readers or who are the audience they do not understand the politics behind it they are just consuming the information which is being thrown at them they are just passive consumers i i you know and that is what is very dangerous we need a society or we need a system where the consumers of news media are not passive but rather they should be active they should know that what is the information which is being given to me and what can be the various agendas on the basis of which this information is being given out by this particular channel or a newspaper so this is what libertarian philosophy talks about then the third one is the communist philosophy and uh, uh, you know obviously the roots of communist philosophy lies in the thoughts of the great philosopher karl marx uh, i hope you know you, you we all are familiar with karl marx and uh, one of the simple thing which i would just like to mention about karl marx is that in the communist philosophy they say that the society should strive to be as egalitarian as possible which means that uh, the it is basically the state which should control the resources and the state will divide it the state will divide it amongst its people the state should be there should be no private control of anything everything should be in the hands of the state and the state will decide whether you know certain how that resource needs to be given so here the first is that state becomes the ownership of the property then the second is uh, you know they say that private property private ownership is not very much encouraged and obviously private ownership is not encouraged then how can you even imagine that profit with will also be encouraged so thankfully uh, you know at least in india we do not have a overtly communist philosophical based media we we have to a large extent a libertarian media which believes in the process of self regulation but uh, you know to to uh, but there are many issues we you know which are cropping up when it comes to self regulation the, the present day media is not as uh, uh, you know as uh, uh, ethical and as professional as they were supposed to be but that's a different issue altogether so yes we're coming to uh, you know communist philosophy it says that profit and private ownership are not very much encouraged because if that happens it leads to certain kind of negative consequences like there will be class division there will be you know excessive greediness and you know it might affect the demeaning of the culture of that state or of that region so we have to protect all these things so because you know if uh, if you say profit then definitely it creates a distinction on the basis of class the rich class and the poor class so that that can have you know a very uh, uh, that can have a very you know uh, detrimental uh, uh, consequence for uh, all of us uh if you, you know uh, if you are looking at the news then you would see that uh, right now in india how the migrant laborers are suffering because of the lockdown and uh, that has created a big challenge for the respective state governments to bring their own people back who are stuck in various parts of the country uh, and uh, you know it is a nightmare uh, you know because you know imagine uh, Uh, bringing five lakh people from Gujarat, how will you bring so many people? They are stuck. 
there is no jobs there is no employment food is not there all these things are happening so we have to find out and yes thankfully you know certain thing has been started but this is just the beginning let's see that you know to you know to what extent we are able to accomplish this task but this having said that it does not mean that just bringing the migrant population or migrant you know uh, the uh, the migrant workers will solve the problem of corona there may be the possibilities that it might also aggravate the you know the consequences of corona so this is how but in a communist philosophy we say that we need to you know completely negate private ownership and profit this is the idea so the media here is basically uh, you know uh, you know uh, it is not directly controlled by the government but they can they can have you know a uh, relative uh, independence uh, say for example i mean if you look at russia uh, russia uh, we all know is a communist uh, uh, you know driven state uh, till the time they were you know a single entity when ussr was not broken down and when it did not become you know soviet republic of russia it was very much ideologically driven by the communist agenda but today also they have certain remnants of the communist influences it's not that they have completely shunned their media is free but they have a certain inclination towards the communist values and communist ideals this is what happens in a communist media set then the next one or the next philosophical approach which we should look at is this social responsibility theory or the social responsibility philosophy now here to simply put the most important responsibility of the media is that they have to be responsible and answerable to the people their content should be balanced their commentary should be balanced and they should not create an extremely unbalanced setup with their news and views so social responsibility and this is the i you know this is perhaps the most interesting one which all the media setups or all the media systems of the world should ideally strive to be who is the media serving today who is the media working for is the media working for the common man or is it working for the interests of the capitalist class the political class the people with money media kaha pe kaam ho raha hai agar hum overall got a view jodi got a dekhiya to chahe ba who is the media serving is it serving the common man i would say i don't think that it is completely serving the common man there are you know many issues when it comes to the whole process of serving the common so in a social responsibility media setup we expect that the media should be responsible towards its society and it should be balanced in its opinions and commentaries and uh, uh you know it is also expected that uh, you know the media or the editors should clarify their objectives the editors or you know the news owners or you know the directors or the publishers they should you know uh, clarify their objectives and they should constantly analyze the covered events they should constantly analyze what is happening in and around the society in as unbiased a manner as possible this is what you know uh, is uh, with uh, with regards to the uh, you know social responsibility media philosophy then the next approach talks about the developmental philosophy now here there are three aspects first media is the watchdog of the activities of the government what is its job it is the watchdog the you know uh, it is constantly going to look at what the government is doing the second it tries to pursue cultural autonomy now what does i what do i mean by cultural autonomy it means that they will act 
as a bridge for the inflow of foreign cultural aspects into their country or into their system they will act as a bridge or they will rather act as you know as a gatekeeper and they will not overtly accept what is being thrown at them through various foreign cultural influences yesterday i was talking about you know pizza uh, olive oils etc we have blindly accepted we have blindly accepted it you know as a part of our uh, of our modern food culture uh, it would be good if the same thing also takes a reverse process of you know our culture getting reflected in the western countries food habits and food cultures so the development philosophy the second approach looks at the cultural autonomy promotion of their own cultures and third you know uh, here the mo- uh, the media is supposed to export media content to other countries just like you know we export goods to other countries in a democratic media setup in a sorry in a developmental media setup it is expected that the media will export the domestic content to other countries so it means that if you are showing mahabharata and ramayana on television in india it's fine but you should also be able to send it to the other countries why can't you know the people in uh, iran afghanistan you know america uk uh, germany watch you know uh, uh, the, these programs we are watching i mean uh, 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 we are watching you know the con- the content of these countries but are they watching the content of our countries that is what is very important so this is what is with regards to the developmental aspect or the developmental media setup then the next one talks about the democratic participant media philosophy the democratic participant now here two principles are followed the first it the media houses take exception of government driven objectives and corporate motives to make room for people oriented content basically it is the people content which plays a crucial and a significant role it is not the media houses or the government driven agenda which is played constantly but rather citizen initiated media content this is a very different kind of a you know model which uh, you know which people are talking about it uh, it is it is a good philosophy i mean you know we can say uh, uh, but whether it is going to be successful not successful that's a different debate altogether but in social media at least we can say that we have avenues right now to express so now when you when you see that youtube is full of avenues where people can express their uh, you know views and opinions contrary to what the mainstream media is offering right now uh, you know the Uh, there is this uh, young fellow uh, uh, i'm i'm forgetting uh, the name and he is very very popular uh, 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 you know the uh, uh, some maheshwar yes uh, uh, he 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 is uh, uh, very very famous uh, and uh, he is very famous amongst the youngsters of our country and uh, you know he 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 constantly acts as you know a critical voice of the state and its policies uh, he he acts as a, you know a critical voice so he, you know he is not part of the mainstream media but he is constantly able to raise his voice and opinions thanks to the democratic participation philosophy thanks to social media on this aspect so here the people uh, one of these uh, small examples uh, of democratic participant would be citizen journalism i hope you are all familiar with the aspect of citizen journalism what is citizen journalism the citizens they say, say or share their own stories they become the own their own reporters the media houses just gives them a platform that is what we are trying to say it's not the reporter who shows you the story but rather the citizen who is affected gives us a perspective about a particular event or an happening right okay 
<coughs> yes. Uh, Aprajita is asking um, the first point of development philosophy. A uh, very quickly, Aprajita. Uh, I, I, you know, the first thing is they in the development philosophy, the media serves as a watchdog. Please understand. Media ro role kimba bhumi ka hala gote jogu aalo. Jogu aalo kaha pai? The to be a watchdog of the activities of the government. Please understand. Watchdog for the activities of the government, especially with regards to physical infrastructures. Especially with regards to physical infrastructure. Physical infrastructure with the corner of which. Road, hella bridge, hella pani supply, hella khadyo, hella healthcare, hella. So these, you know, this is something. How the government is utilizing its resources? Watch the. This is what I mean by the first point of development philosophy, right? So uh, uh, moving on. Uh, I think yes, I have uh, talked about the democratic uh, uh, philosophy, democratic participant philosophy. So this basically are some of the important systems or important philosophies which are at play which are at play at you know at all the levels of the world in which we are living uh, in some places you can see the communist media philosophy in some places we are we are able to witness you know the authoritarian media setup in some places we are also seeing a libertarian media philosophy so it is there everywhere it is not that you know uh, 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 I, I, I would rather i would say that it's not uh, it's not that ki all these media setups can be found in one country a country can have a mix a country can have a mix of all these philosophies and in a country at some point may may uh, show authoritarian philosophy the media is completely afraid of being critical of the state but on the same hand there are other media which is being very critical of the government so we have to understand that all these things operate within their own you know setup within their own political setup their own economic financial setup their cultural setup and we just have to spot and identify how the media operates now my question for the learners do you think india right now is having an authoritarian media setup please i'm repeating the question do you think india right now has an authoritarian media regime okay mahendra manoj bino uh, mahendra and manoj they say no uh, binod aprajita they say partially Sunil says yes. Jagannath uh, does not know. Tapas no. Partially, partially. Okay, okay. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, right. Somendranath uh, Naik is also saying not completely. Uh, it is, uh, it is uh, uh, wonderful. Yes. I mean, I agree. In some aspects, we see that the media is not completely working under an authoritarian philosophy, but. there are instances there are instances where the government controls the media there can be so you will have to you know be alert and you can easily spot that how the media becomes the lap dog instead of being the watchdog there is a difference the media which is supposed to be the watchdog becomes a lap dog of the state and its machinery and that can be very dangerous for a democratic setup anyways thank you good i mean you know uh, thanks to all the you know uh, you know people who are responding i mean you know it, uh, it's also a good it's also a good way of also checking that you know how well we are progressing during the course of my lecture so this is how i think you know uh, the philosophies of the world operate now uh, the next aspect which we should look at is the democratization of information flow yesterday if you remember i was talking about the flow of information right the flow of information how information is flowing now uh, 
it whether it is flowing from the top to the or bottom to the top now one of the things uh, you know which i said was there are various act and gatekeepers in how that flow of information happen so democratization of inflow usually early in 1980s the unesco started a debate in the early 1980s and 1990s that it was mostly an emotional debate about the flow of information through the media around the world मीडिया मध्यम इनफर्मेशन पृथ्वी जाक किमी सर्कुलेट हो यूनेस्को मध्यम गोटे आलो डिबेट आरंभ करा गला नाउ दैट लेड टू द क्रिएशन ऑफ वेरियस इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग्स जोटा कि मुझे मध्य कही एन डब्ल्यू आई सीओ द न्यू वर्ल्ड इनफर्मेशन एंड कम्युनिकेशन अर्डर इट ऑल you know it uh, spoke or uh, told us about the new international information order so all this th- <coughs> uh, became prominent thanks to the debate which was initiated by unesco but then you know these these debates did not have any relevance and later on it lost steam but essentially the global what is this global information flow a global information flow kahile kon ame bujhu it is basically how media content moves across the globe through newspapers televisions radio websites and other media which the people are accessing outra ko je bhalare sunantu bhalare bujhantu global information flow koile kon bujhe ame na media content prithvi jako bibhinna madhyam re kimiti lokomananko pakhare pahunchu ji सी चाहे आम समाज पत्र हो कि खबर कागज हो टेलीजन चेल रेडियो प्रोग्राम हो इंटरनेट मीडिया ग्लोबल फ्लो कंट्रीजरी रिजन from information is usually originating go to information in usually originate karuchi say to originate kariki baki prithvi jakare spread hochi what are these you know sources then the second thing is uh, are there certain countries which put out more media content than rest of the world it you know i have been for all of you you are all watching english cinema in cinema halls yes in ingraji picture ame cinema halls o dekhuche so does it mean that it is only hollywood which is producing cinemas at the international level i think africa must also be producing its own cinema yes africa is must also be producing its own cinema but how many people how many people have got an opportunity to go and watch an african cinema in a cinema hall that is what i mean here eti prashna ta hochi seya je media content ko to swabhavik bhavare originate karuchi and kono sehi jaga guda beshi prakar ro media content ku banau chanti ki aa jodi banau chanti sei ta am paaku ku beshi matra re pahunchu chi so simple the answer is very obvious us and uk happen to be the dominant nations which create media content and their content gets proliferated throughout the world at a tremendous level their content gets proliferated throughout the world at a tremendous level we are watching we are accessing not only their cinema but we are also accessing their television series their uh, their you know their uh, <coughs> uh just give me one second i'll have a glass of water and then i'll get back yes so you know as i was saying that 
Africa is also producing its cinema. But the ways in which we are accessing cinema from Hollywood, it is not similar to that which is that which which we are accessing with regards to say Africa. That is what we need to understand. Why we have so much of access to Hollywood cinema? Why not African cinema? A jinsota, a prosna ta ko amu ko bujhya rochi. Say for example, you know, in India, in India, which is the most prominent cinema industry which we have access to? Jadi me Bharat ko bitter hai. Jadi mu kahi bhi, ame Odisha, ame samastho Odisha bitter rochi. To mu prosna di hoji, jee Bharat ko bitter hai, ame को भलिया सिनेमा ओडिसा रे मुख्यतः देखिवा को पाऊ यस लर्नर्स आपण मानक पे प्रश्न ओडिसा भितरे आमे को भारतीय सिनेमा को मुख्यतः देखिवा को पाऊ एब्सोल्युटली यस वंडरफुल शिवाशी सोमेंद्रनाथ वंडरफुल यस हिंदी बॉलीवुड डोमिनेंट आई मीन एब्सोल्युटली डोमिनेंट यू नो थ्रूआउट यू नो नॉट ओनली इन ओडिसा बेसिकली बट थ्रूआउट द होल कंट्री एंड इंटरेस्टिंगली इट इज not only dominant in india it is also dominant in countries like pakistan and bangladesh pakistan and bangladesh are also making their own cinema kintu interestingly pakistan and bangladesh re bharatiya cinema ro madhya kafi chahida achi people are watching cinema so ame e jodi pakistan based to jodi ame jodi eti bujha ko chesta kariba then we can say that pakistan is more dependent or pakistan is having a proliferation of indian based media content india is having a proliferation of western based media content and odisha bhitare jodi ame kahiba tare odisha is having a proliferation of bhubneswar katak based media content for the rest of the state buji palle mane jodi jodi bharatiya star re dekhiba tale हॉलीवुड रो चाहिदा भारतीय स्तर रे हम देखिया को पाउछ जदि ओडिसा स्तर रे हम देखिबा ओडिसा भितरे बॉलीवुड रो चाहिदा हम देखिया को पाउछ जदि ओडिसा भितरे हम जेदो देखिया को चाहिबा ताहेले हम देखिबा जे ओडिसा भितरे कटक भुवनेश्वर रे होउतबा चलचित्र मानकर चाहिदा बेसी देखिया को मिलुछ म आपन मानक एडी कहि दिबा को भी चाहू छी जे ओडिसा रे केवल कटक भुवनेश्वर रे होउतबा सिनेमा होउनी आ मु जेहेतु कोरापुट रे अछि म आपन इंटरनेशनल लेवल सो दीज आर समी क्वेश्चन यू नो आई एम ट्राइंग टू रेज दिस क्रिटिकल क्वेश्चन सो दैट थ्रू दिस क्वेश्चन थ्रू दिस क्वेश्चन वी कैन वी कैन हैव एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट यू नो वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू डील विथ बेसिकली आई एम नाउ मुविंग फॉरवर्ड मुविंग फॉरवर्ड येस Uh, there are some few comments. Uh, Somendranath is saying uh, only local Manoj Pati. Oh, yes, absolute. I mean, uh, you should listen. So, you know, this is this is uh, a homework for all my learners today. Okay, so after the end of this session, you should all spend at least fifteen twenty minutes to listen to a few Koraputiya Desiya music. It is really interesting and really wonderful for all of us to listen. I am a kebola bhavuche. The you know this. Uh, human sagar i think he is a very popular odia singer uh, uh, but he is not the only one who is singing odia songs some wonderful job is also being done by people in all these remote corners of our state so a jinshoda ko amko bujhi rakhya na nihati zaruri so uh, moving on this was with thanks to the flow of information and In that there is a disproportionate volume in which this information is. So it means information go to sutra da tar sutra ta kono. Aao se sutra ko arambha kare ki kimiti bhabar hai seda flow hoj. Ye jin se wada sabu new world information tera alochana karagi. Abhi toh kya basic jau ni? I think you know I have tried to explain you the most basic context. And once you read more about it, you will develop. better understanding these issues focus on some issues with 
this to international communication. Look at some key issues at an international level. Now, when I say issues, definitely uh, the most issue which comes to mind is the violence against media persons. This is an extremely, extremely important issue which we all need to keep uh, in our mind. Not only in India, but at the global level, every year a significant number of journalists are being killed in the line of duty. Why? Because journalists are perceived as threats. And why are they perceived as threats? They are perceived as threats because through their medium of writing or expressing, they can expose the wrongdoings of the people in power, whether they belong to the state or whether they belong to any private corporation or establishment. And as we all know, that is the most important role of the watchdog to, you know, to bring about the, uh, you know, the, the, the uncomfortable truth, to bring about the uncomfortable truth right in front of the people so that the people can make their own choices. Give unedited and authentic information to the people, give them an unbiased perspective about an issue and let them decide what they need to do. Let they be the masters. Don't give them a manipulated information because if you give them manipulated information, then their decision making will also be manipulated. So that is why we say that violence against media persons is increasing. A very recently, you know, in Uttar Pradesh, journalists were attacked. A few years back, you know, in Karnataka, a famous, you know, woman journalist was murdered in broad daylight. In Maharashtra, in Odisha, in all parts of the world, in all parts of the country, we are seeing that you know journalists are being attacked and they are being killed because they are doing the most difficult job of exposing people in power. And they will do anything and everything possible to keep them shut. And this is something which we all have to stand together. So this is the important issue which say is happening with the process of international communication. Uh, uh, you know, the another aspect is that if the, uh, you know, uh, Deepak, it is not the, it is Gauri Lankesh. Okay, uh, so yeah. But anyways, yeah, so coming to, uh, coming to, you know, that uh, this whole death of journalists, I would say that, do you think that justice is being, when some of that sort happens. I think it is all question which we keep in our mind. But at the end of the day, what we are to say is that the spirit of shall never die. That is the most important with regards to this information. No matter how, you know, how the truth but it cannot uh, the truth needs to be told. Uh, I think up here, uh, uh, and then in, uh, I can uh, take uh, questions, uh, Doctor. Hello, I think uh, uh, Sujit sir has uh, explained to a great detail uh, the basic issues that we normally associate with uh, international communication. Uh, what I also like about this lecture is the way he has uh, related the imbalance uh, in the flow of information from uh, the international uh, to the domestic arena like uh, imbalance in the flow of information not only exists in the international arena, in, imbalance in the flow of information uh, to a large extent can also be seen within a nation. Uh, it can also be seen within a state. Uh, for instance, uh, those in Bhuvneshwar will find or those those getting news from Odia channels will, will realize that most of the news is about Katak and Bhuvneshwar, which is the preferred uh, center. 
So here we are actually talking about a, a phenomena which is also known as the center periphery syndrome. Center periphery syndrome at Apno Bujia Darkar, the center always dominates the periphery. Ajika Ajikarju international uh, geopolitical situation, right? It is maybe USA which occupies the center. It has been it has been in the position of center for quite some time, maybe after the Cold War. So it is obvious that the the maximum movies, Spider-Man, the Kantu, Troy, the Kantu, the kind of success they had. Uh, in, in Indian Superman, the kind of success they enjoy, even in the Indian markets, even in the Saudi markets, cannot be thought of. The kind of money they make from these markets is, is um, uh, something that uh, our own films can, can, can never dream of. So this is, this is uh, something and he has, he has done a pretty good job. It is not just the case of American movies dominating Indian market or American movies dominating the global market. It is also Amok Desabhitra Bidekle. It is also Bollywood dominating uh, all other uh, regional film industries. It is also the case of uh, the film industry, Odia film industry, primarily located in Katak and Bhuvneshwar, dominating the rest of Odisha. So it has a center periphery syndrome. And it's a very uh, it's a very it's a very vicious circle. I mean it uh Sabu Sabuti Achi. And uh, it is a clear sign of dominance. There is, a, there is an element of dominance to it. So as a corollary, there is also an element of subjugation, subjugation to it. Jana dominate kariwa or jana dominated habba. And it is unjust. It is, it is, it is an unjust system. It is a justice nahi, but it prevails. So the new world information and communication order wanted <coughs> the uh, societies which are being neglected not only nations, but also societies which are being neglected should also develop their own indigenous media, should also develop their own media efforts so that Tanka voice to be mainstream and all pahunchi levi say pakha pakhi pahunchi paru. At least they should be aware of themselves. So that was the basic uh, idea of uh, the new world information and communication order. Many third world nations, they started their own communication setup. Basically, Kali we discussed kori thulu, India Rebi. Uh, the communication revolution started primarily uh, after after the debate uh, on after the debate was uh, this debate on uh, new world information and communication order indigenous media efforts started even in a country like india so tabisarame kali we discussed karthulu uh, second point jaha parasar gurutva dele that was the violence that uh, media persons uh, experience Upon Jani Madarkar, the violence can be of can be of two types. Violence need not always be physical. Violence can also be in the form of uh, censorship. Violence can also be in the form of uh, uh, it can be also in the form of uh, a threat. Uh, it can also be in the form of a verbal threat. Uh, it can also be in the form of economic sanctions. Uh, I mean, it can be also a, a, it can be also in in the form of uh, doing damage to your career perspectives. So there can be several different forms of violence. Violence need not always be physical violence. It need not always be a death threat, death threat, uh, or or the killing of a journalist. Jodaki ho chibi. Violence can take different forms. Violence can take different shapes. So I think I have this is this is in a nutshell what, uh, sir. Uh, spoke about today am i correct sujit sir now gichi uh, yes sir i agree with uh, you know uh, to the additions which you have made uh, i think you know we should uh, take some questions and you know try to uh, answer them uh, <clears throat> there are some questions uh, one uh, one um, uh, you know learner is asking uh, the difference between ipr and trips i can uh, well ipr basically uh, sir if i may answer uh, IPR, as we all know, is intellectual property rights. So, what is intellectual property rights? It is basically thing. It is an agreement that I will not steal your work. There are many things which is in today's world mostly intellectual. Either you write a book, you develop a new idea. These are all you know your creations. And imagine if someone steals it without giving you the due credit that is <coughs> excuse me 
that is what you know ipr basically tries to address it is a law uh, which tries to protect uh, the intellectual property rights now trips if you are specifically interested on about trips now it trips is trade related aspects of intellectual property rights here we are mostly looking at the trade related aspects now what are these trade related aspects simple example i'll just give you a simple example of trips it can be say for example the trademark can a company which is using the symbol of say nike nike jotar goda symbol achi apan mane gani thiba can you use that symbol in your product okay that is this a trade related intellectual property apple company je phone banauchi iphone banauchi tar nirjar gode nirdharita apple ta ko se gode symbol karichu can someone use it no if you use it then you are in violation of these trade related intellectual property rights so this is basically you know ipr and tr ips ipr is mostly at a personal level or an individual or institutional level trips mostly relates to the economic and commercial and trade related aspects trade related issues trade related things so there are many you know uh, many uh, agreements which has been uh, you know signed between various nations of the world with regards to trips uh, so it's a, it's a huge uh, a discussion um, uh, you know if if we talk about trips uh, uh, so i'm just i thought you know very quickly i will uh, just give you an overview uh, talking about i can can is basically you know it's an organization it's a voluntary organization which Uh, you know uh, uh, i mean it's it's it stands for international corporation for assigned name and numbers it is uh, now what is internet basically if i were to say who owns the internet internet ko kie kon gotiye loko control karuchi ki internet is nothing but it is a where it is a connection of networks it is a connection of networks but within that connection there are certain interests of the users and of the content creators which needs to be protected so for example the creation of a domain name i mean suppose coach www.osu.ac.in right now this is our address now if, what if someone steals this address you understand so these becomes you know certain kind of issues so organizations like i can they look after uh, you know aspects related to uh, you know these things uh, mostly you know uh, internet related uh, uh, aspects uh, then um, yes arparajita is asking uh, how can we bring important issues like social issues environment issues in the limelight of mainstream media see arparajita it's not that the mainstream media is not covering these social issues they are covering these social issues but the question is to what extent are these issues being covered what is the major focus of the news media organizations with regards to the coverage of these issues so that is something we have to understand they i mean uh, it's uh, you know the his uh, i mean they would comparison kariba between newspapers national level right hindu and times of india let us for you know example compare these two newspapers hindu newspaper is mostly a newspaper which will talk about development related issues at least ame kiche development related issues hindu newspaper re paiba times of india re ame ei bhala news ra sankhya bahut matra re kam rahiba and their focus would be mostly commercial cinema films entertainment etc etc so it it's a you know how you know certain media sources have developed their on so the question is we as audience i mean we as consumers of news and should also be proactive in the media houses we have to question, we have to make them accountable that why are you not covering the farmer suicides why are you not of the plight of you know the migrant laborers so mane ei jinsha ta ko amuku ta ko padibo ame kai kina se jaha amuku pura thopi douchanti taku akhi band kari ki accept kar deba ta hala sabutu bodo okay uh, yeah aprajita uh, yes uh, just i am that 
what the media channels are imposing on we should not blindly accept it we should also you know engage interaction with these media houses then only they will know that the viewer or the audience is not passive but rather active Dewari sir, anything to add? Uh, the next question is uh, from Binod. Uh, how can a journalist be the voice of voiceless in India by setting aside, by setting side, by taking the side of media where he or she works? Is it possible for a journalist? What what he wants to know is: Is it possible for a journalist to to become a voice for the voiceless? जो मने जो मने अबहरित हो बाहु पे खितो तांका पाई can he become a voice and what what is there are there any practical uh, methods or are there any practical tips that you can provide so that he he can he as a journalist can actually become a voice for the voiceless yeah i remember uh, you know i if you must have heard about the famous the maxis award p saina b saina in one of his book you know the famous book Everybody loves a good drought. Has said that when the farmers in Vidarbha region, Maharashtra, committing suicide because they because of uh, the for, for failure of their crops, journalists in Mumbai were not interested to go to remote regions and the plight of farmers. Rather, they were fighting in Mumbai. ताको ताको भीतर बढ़िया बढ़िया होता है बढ़िया बढ़िया नॉट इन द लिटरल रियल सेंस बट इन द लिटरल सेंस दैट हु वुड गेट द फ्रंट सीट टिकेट्स फॉर लैक्मे इंडिया फैशन वीक दिस इज हाउ यू नो आर जर्नलिस्ट्स आर एक्चुअली बट वी आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू बी द वॉइस ऑफ द वॉइसलेस आई मीन हियर आई वुड लाइक टू टॉक अबाउट यू नो वन जर्नलिस्ट इन द प्रेजेंट टाइम्स एनडीटीवी जर्नलिस्ट रवीश कुमार If you are watching Ravish Kumar, you will see that uh, uh, you know. If you if you watch Ravish Kumar, then I think he is a classic example of being a voice for the voiceless. He you look at his coverage of issues, look at his you know ways in which he is commenting on these issues. A balanced perspective. So the choice has to be yours. You have to decide. i cannot decide it for you that whether it, because ultimately when we teach in the classroom we say that as a journalist you are supposed to be a voice of the voiceless but if you decide that no i will not be a voice for the voiceless but i will be a voice for the corporate owners that's a choice which you have made so don't expect that you know you will not face resistance by certain people who actually want to be voice of the voiceless so you have to make your own choice in this regard i i know uh, they they need a voice you have the tool you have the mechanism the choice to execute is completely and purely yours there is uh, there is a question from deepak uh, what should be the comprehensive policy of indian media to counter anti kashmir propaganda uh, of the pakistani media i think this is also a question that uh, that features in our slm this question is also there in our slm or maybe it has been uh, it has it's an assignment question i guess maybe it's an assignment question so he wants to know the answer to that question what should be the comprehensive policy of indian media to counter anti kashmir propaganda of the pakistani media you know this is this is uh, uh, first of all you know i uh, this is a quite a complicated question and if i were to give an answer to this question on a virtual medium then you know the whole india kashmir issue would get solved right now right here and uh, you know that would be the great success of these three days of lectures so you know i uh, sorry uh, deepak uh, i don't think that this is the right forum and right platform for me to get into this extremely debatable and controversial topic but this require a special segment if i were to say this requires a special segment and analysis only on how indian media has been looking at the kashmir issue with regards to pakistan media 
this can be a one on one issue and we can talk only about this issue for say one hour or two hours and i would be more than happy to do that yes and first of all uh, deepak you have to be clear whether india indian media has actually been you have to you have to be you have to be uh, particular do you really mean to say that india indian media has been unsuccessful in dealing with the pakistani propaganda i mean i think to a large extent indian media indian media has has not been as unsuccessful itte bhi indian media has not fared that badly when it comes to the kashmir issue because india has on many occasions uh, successfully tabled the kashmir problem uh, successfully tabled the indian indian side indian perspective of the kashmir problem in the international forum so i think indian media has not done that badly either Uh, to counter check the propaganda of the kashmir uh, problem that's been done by the pakistan media a uh, next question uh, it's not a question actually it's a view point uh, mahendra kumar mishra wants to say that p sainath has an odia connection he has an odisha connection and he was working as a rural editor of the hindu uh, yes sir you are true uh, p sainath is still active though he has left hindu he is still active in the world of journalism he now currently he currently uh, runs uh, a fairly popular uh, a forum called pari people archives of rural india and you can also be a member of that forum if you like and it posts stories uh, of negligence uh, posts stories of neglect of farmers and the deprived and apanak pakhare bi jodi story achi you can post it at pari pari people archives of rural india Uh, which is currently being run by P Sainath, so he is very much active. Ah, uh, he had a problem with Hindu. Ah, uh, if I am not wrong, Sujit sir, you correct me. Ah, uh, and the main point of contention was the lack of a zeal in Hindu to cover the investigative stories, and that is what brought P Sainath at loggerheads to the management of Hindu. Ah, uh, your take, uh, Sujit sir. I absolutely agree with you, Doctor Devi, because we all know that uh, you know post the exit of Saina, also we also saw the exit of some top journalists from Hindu, because Hindu was also revisiting its policy of how it covers certain issues. Somewhere down the line, uh, it was felt that Hindu diluted or compromised on its policy of actually being a voice of the voiceless. So uh, you know we were discussing about this aspect of voice of the voiceless because. Uh, Mahendra Mahendra Mishra has rightly said that Hindu is perhaps the only newspaper in India which used to have a special post of rural affairs editor. But slowly over a period of time, and yes, I can also understand that you know there are also various market forces at play. To run a large organization like Hindu, I mean, uh, you also need to pay salaries to the journalists at the end of the day. So somewhere. they had to made us make a compromise and perhaps that did not go down well with saina and he decided that it's time for him to part ways and continue with his noble agenda of talking about the issues which the mainstream media usually does not pick up uh, there is a question from sunil kumar mahanti is international information a bullet for the government i think this question has not been phrased correctly i think what he means to say is that Uh, is is international communication or the information that a nation sends to the international community does it have a vested interest or does it does it serve the national interest of the country i think that is what or do you like to rephrase the question if you like to rephrase the question fine otherwise this is what we assume that you wanted to ask that uh, uh, yes, does yes, yes I, i i get it sir i mean uh... Uh, absolutely i mean you know when we project our information at an international level we do it with a specific objective behind it i mean look at the way in which a recent event was covered by you know by the media the event was with regards to the sending of hydroxychloroquine medicines to the us very recently this thing happened what was the first thing first it was that the US government requested India to send hydroxychloroquine for the battle against covid and uh, i think you know india did not respond or india uh, said no and then we we see it in media reports that america or donald trump specifically is threatening india that is how it was covered and the next day 
we see that you know india is sending you know medicines to america and then we are saying that no 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 it was not a threatening but rather it was misunderstood by the international community and everything is fine amongst us so this is how you know issues get projected and uh, you know it can be uh, you know understood or misunderstood but there definitely is an agenda for each and every government at the national and the international level when it comes to the projection of images of their nation so uh, you know it it's absolutely it's absolutely uh, you know reasonable also because how india is projected at an international level we have to decide but that should not be at the cost of lying that is something we have to also be careful about just because you know we want to say that india is a very uh, you know super power but uh, without any uh, proper documents and facts to you know substantiate it that amounts to lying and that amounts to propaganda that we have to you know take care of i do agree because media at the end of the day is is uh, uh, is a national entity it's it's uh, it's a part of uh, it 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 comes it cannot supersede the sovereignty of a nation media comes very much under the control of a nation and media also has to like all other institutions across the society media also has a national interest to preserve so uh, in this for the sake of neutrality uh, a media cannot say ki hame uh, we we can we can uh, uh, do damage to the to the impression that the world carries about our nation that is not that is not correct that is not uh, ethical on the part of media either but yes there is a line <clears throat> like uh, extravagant claims uh, and uh, abika <clears throat> there is a lot of uh, apprehension regarding the role that was played by the chinese media in handling the covid issue and that is that story is still developing we don't know what happens we don't know whether the media is really telling the right figures or whether it's hiding figures whether we don't know whether the media in china is allowed freely to operate we don't know had the media in china been had been had it been a little bit more responsible covid issue ta china re hi control hi ye thanda da bahar ko asina thanda ta bisare amar abhika to kichi mantavya da bata thik no but it's a story that's developing and maybe in the 4 5 6 months from now there would be a huge uh, it would become a huge case huge sensation uh, if the chinese media uh, is is actually being analyzed properly in its connection to the covering of covid story so there is there is a definite that is a national interest and plus and beyond that there is also a humanitarian interest so these two have to be balanced and uh, we need to see at the end of the day that the media is both national as well as humanitarian that is my take on this aao bodhe kichi question nahi or are there still some more questions no i don't think i think we have exhausted our quota of questions so i would uh, uh, express my gratitude for mr sujit mahanti for having accepted our invitation to deliver these lectures I mean, Janchu, these are crucial uh, blocks. These are crucial papers, and they are papers uh, for the uh, for the fourth semester MJMC. So right now, our emphasis is on fourth semester MJMC. Kana, you are going to be our first batch, first passing out batch. So all the efforts are being channelized towards the fourth semester MJMC. So one of the pending, one of the blocks of film film studies, as well as two blocks of international communication, international and intercultural communication, were were. done proper justice by mr sujit mahanti so i thank him profusely from the osu community and i also thank the uh, learners for their patience and for their participation as simanjim participate kale by writing their responses in the dashboard was also commendable i thank my co moderator uh, dhir sir bisobhushan dhir sir i also thank uh, the members of the technical team amit tripathi and uh, Uh, all all my very best to the fourth semester mjmc students for their forthcoming examination so let us wait and see how the uh, how the society shapes up uh, how we deal with the covid 19 issue uh, and uh, my sincere thanks to one and all my special thanks to sujit sir uh, sorry fine i just add uh, just one you know concluding remark uh, yes okay Uh, you know i i i really enjoyed these three sessions you know which uh, you know which were organized by osu and i have a special appreciation for you know for this uh, for the teaching members of osu and also uh, to all the you know learners because you know i was really impressed by you know the 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 questions which were posed during our question answer session because you know it it also reflects
affects the maturity of the learners of an institution so thank you very much learner very much for your wonderful questions i also would like to say that due to certain reasons some of the questions could not be answered but i am always open to having a one on one discussion with anyone if you ever like to discuss some of the aspects related to media so that is it i would like to say thank you one and all thank you very much we come to the end of our session thank you thank you all thank you sir thank you